Hey everybody, this is Mike with On Point Preparedness. I apologize for the lack of videos, but unfortunately my computer had completely fried over the past week. The hard drives were dead, so I had to buy new hard drives, and luckily I have an IT friend who was able to restore everything and get me back up and running today. There were some huge articles in the news, prophetic end times articles in the news over the past week, and I was going to do a type of mini documentary on them, but because of the lapse in computer and some loss of data that I had, I'm just going to go ahead and do this informal video to get this information out to all of you because it's really that critical. I mean, this stuff is this stuff is huge, and I have been itching to get on the computer and record something for you all. Now, some of these articles you have probably seen already from fellow YouTubers and bloggers. Tony at a minute to midnight covered this one right here. But I'm one, I'm gonna wanna string a bunch of these articles together and tie them into some of my prior research. So, to start, let's begin here. This was on Friday, September 13th. Pope Francis invites religious and political leaders to sign a new global pact for, quote, new humanism. That term in and of itself is pretty creepy. Now, the Pope had invited representatives of main religions, institutional organizations, humanitarian people, key figures, etc., 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 to sign, signatures are very important, a global pact on education, which targets the younger generations, which is something he has been doing quite frequently during his stead as Pope. Now, he says that a global educational pact is needed to educate us, or should I say re-educate, uh, us in universal solidarity and a new humanism, again that creepy term, in this video message that he shared. I'll put a link in the YouTube description box if you want to go ahead and, and watch this yourself. Now, the really key thing I think about this is that the Pope has been tackling various segments of society and trying to get the world underneath his thumb and control the narrative again with these big buckets of society this one being education and if you recall back in 2016 i did this video here prophecy fulfillment revelation 18 is happening this is when the pope held a global economic forum to in essentially enlist all the world's top CEOs and forge a new social compact with them for the 21st century. So you have the educational aspect here where he is trying to lead and control. And back in 2016, here he was reaching out to the businessmen of the world, which I made a potential prophetic alignment there with scripture where the businessmen that Revelation speaks of is the merchants of those days. But again, you can see these various segments of society that the Pope is going after. He's going after the religious aspect, which we're going to cover in some of these other articles here. He's trying to unify religions. He's trying to unify the merchants or businessmen of the world and get them underneath his leadership. And now we're seeing it go and span into education. So this is, this is highly prophetic. We see the world coming together on multiple different fronts. And this man is at the helm of it. So again, this uh, this event back here in 2016 is a pretty popular article, but uh, you can see he is at the center of many things. Now, among all the things that he's the center of, let's focus a little bit on this whole religious aspect. So these types of events here, the Global Pact on Education and uh, this event here with regards to the businessmen, a lot of them tie back into this document on human fraternity for world peace and living together. You can see it was signed by Pope Francis and another religious leader, the Grand Imam um, Al-Azhar Ahmed. I'm not even going to go through the name, but you get it. There are very important people in the religious sphere that are signing documents with Pope Francis. And not only are we having the Pope and Islam signing documents together, you also have rabbis, top rabbis from Judaism, united with this multi-faith initiative that the Pope is leading. And so he is in fact leading a one world religion. 
And if you go into this document on human fraternity for world peace and living together, when you actually look at the document and you look at these bulletproofed uh, little things here in terms of what they stand for, a lot of it sounds like the Noahide laws, which I had discussed in this video, Noahide laws of the Antichrist and Hebrew roots movement. We're actually going to move into this in a second. But let us not forget that there was this commission for religious relations with Jews from the Vatican. This is from Vatican.va. This is around 2007. And here they acknowledge Jewish tradition emphasizes the Noahide covenant as containing the universal moral code which is incumbent on all humanity. And they say that this is actually a, a Christian idea. And they give some verses in the Bible which supposedly support this idea of a Noahide covenant and it being important and incumbent on all humanity. So definitely the Pope is influenced by the Noahide laws. I'm not going to get into it in this video, but the Pope um, Berglio, before he actually became Pope, him and some other high priests in Roman Catholicism actually took a trip to Jerusalem in the months before he became Pope. And there they were teaching him about Judaism and about the Noahide laws and many other things. Again, that will be for a future video. But the main thing is here is he is trying to unify religions. He is trying to bring people together. It sounds very much like Noahide laws. And he has grand imams and high rabbis in Judaism all signing up together. And what are, or what is rather, the similarity that Judaism, Catholicism, slash Christianity, and Judaism, what, what do these three religions, Islam, Judaism, and Christianity, have together? They supposedly, I'm saying quote unquote, they have a root in Abraham. So from Abraham, you had Abraham and Sarah, and they gave birth to the child of the promise, which is Isaac, and from there you have spawned the Jews and then therefore Christianity. And then because Sarah did not trust on God's promise, she told Abraham to go into their servant Hagar, and they bore Ishmael. And Islam identifies Ishmael as the start of their religion, as the start of Islam. And so that's why you're seeing these three major religions get together with the Pope for human fraternity and world peace and living together. Again, they are moving towards this pretty quickly. You can see just here, September 23rd, 2019, there's that, there's that big date again, September 23rd. Higher Committee on Human Fraternity, there's that name again, unveils design for Abrahamic family house. A new body is empowered, and again, this is through Pope Francis, a new body is empowered to provide guidance and counsel on realizing the goals on or of the document on human fraternity for world peace and living together signed by Pope Francis and the Grand Imam in the United Arab Emirates. So again, that was this document, which again sounds very much like Noahide laws. It goes on to say that one of the projects of the higher committee is to build an Abrahamic family house to be located in Abu Dhabi. And you can actually see there is a little video here. I'll probably include this in the YouTube description as well, giving a animated or virtual tour of what this three house, three houses of prayer would be. Again, three religions all having a root in Abraham, Christianity, Judaism, and Islam. So again, this is being pushed for by the Pope, pushing these three major religions together amongst all the other religions. But most importantly, I think this is what you're going to have to watch out for because the Antichrist is going to play on these three very heavily. Sure, there's Hinduism and Buddhism and a lot of other world religions out there, but they're going to go with the flow because these are the three main world religions. Now, what is really creepy for me personally about all of this is that in 2018, 
June 25th, I went into, here in Cincinnati, an interfaith conference that is held yearly. Last year was the first time, the inaugural interfaith um, festival that they had. And the very first thing that I saw when I walked into this building um, is this Bridges of Faith trilogue, Islam, Christianity, Judaism. You are also seeing this in other states, and you're also seeing it across the world as well. You are seeing this, I think this is out in, might be wrong about this, Nebraska. This is called Tri-Faith Initiative. Again, it is bringing together three houses of prayer. Um, it says somewhere in here, but essentially you're going to have three campuses in this area. Again, the community of our Ab Abrahamic faith partners. There's going to be three separate spaces for each of the religions with a common and informal meeting space in the middle. Can you see so much of this interfaith intertwining, especially with these three religions? Now, just to move on a little bit here, um, you know, how are these religions going to be unified together? Well, we know there is going to be an antichrist. He is going to peddle to all these religions. He is probably going to say something to the effect of, you know, portraying himself as an angel of light, um, pandering again to these three major religions because they all have a root in Abraham. And I really do think that the Noahide laws are going to have some type of play in this. Um, my, again, these are all just opinions, theological opinions. And, you know, could be wrong, but we're, we're really starting to see things play out here with the document on human fraternity and it looking very much like Noahide laws. The fact that back in 2007, the Vatican even publishes documents emphasizing the importance of the Noahide covenant. In this video that I did on the Noahide laws, I show you how, you know, the Noahide laws are actually being promoted around Israel. We know that the Noahide laws have also been promoted within the United States. Um, in this video, I have some clips of where certain Noahide laws were signed in terms of U.S. congressional laws. You have here, uh, right there, 1991, President George H.W. Bush signed into law a historic joint resolution of both houses of Congress recognizing the seven Noahide laws as a bedrock of society from the dawn of civilization. Um, you can actually see him in this video signing that. You also have President Trump acknowledging it as well. I think they acknowledge it on some said frequency, maybe yearly. And not only are we seeing that sort of play out here with this Tri-Faith Initiative and the Abrahamic faiths, but just recently, the Temple Mount Institute had a sacrifice, a real sacrifice, Renewing the covenant of Noah, again, the Abrahamic covenant, Noahide laws, renewing the covenant of Noah for the 70 nations. And this is a pretty crazy video. I will link this in the YouTube description box. And they are stating that they are trying to bring humanity together in love by offering a sacrifice, not as a sin atonement, but as a way of renewing the covenant of Abraham. Again, I will put this in the YouTube description box, but there's a whole ceremony about how they are doing this for the nations. In fact, you have Rabbi Weiss here, who I believe um, he's part of the Sanhedrin. He's been in several videos lately that you've seen on YouTube. But they had Gentiles building an altar and sacrificing, because the Jews are not allowed to sacrifice anywhere other than the Temple Mount. So the Jews are opening the gateway or opening the door and convincing Gentiles that this is for their benefit. This is a huge good for the world. And they are going back to sacrificing animals to, again, renew the covenant of Noah for the 70 na nations. You can see this right here in the description of Breaking Israel News, who recorded this. This is Adam Eliyahu. Uh, Berkowitz, I believe his name is. I'm going to talk about him in just a second here. 
because uh, he just pu published a video response because many people had condemned him for not only filming this event, but also praising it. I want to just talk about him just in a little second here. Now, this event was very small. There's probably only about 40 people in attendance, and then later it maybe grew to about 120 or so, but a lot of those people were just bystanders, and they really weren't sure what was going on. So a relatively small event here. However, um, you can see some of these prophetic things start to align. And if the Pope is aligning with high rabbis who support this, the state of Israel did not condone this. But again, this is, this is, uh, that's political Israel. Religious Israel and the Sanhedrin body, they very much do support this. And that is who the Pope is talking to. And the Pope is talking to the grand imams. And if at some point, prophetically, we get down further in this road and something like this is supported at a higher level, uh, that's going to be huge. So we're seeing the beginnings of this, essentially, is what I'm trying to say right now. And just shifting focus a little bit, this is this is a keen warning for everyone watching this because I don't think a lot of people realize. But again, this was filmed by Breaking Israel News. This is a very popular Go to the website right now. This is a very popular website amongst Christians. This is part of the Israel 365 media conglomerate. There's a lot of sites, including the Blaze, which Glenn Beck is a Mormon. Um, there's a lot of sites supported by Israel 365. Again, it's a conglomerate of media news agencies. Breaking Israel News, not to be confused with Israeli News Live with Ben and Yana Benu. Breaking Israel News is not Christian. They are Jewish. They support Judaism. However, I think a lot of Christians out there look at this site because they talk about end times prophecy. But it's not from a biblical point of view. Breaking Israel News supports the building of a third temple. Breaking Israel News enjoys, and if you watch this video, you can hear the excitement in Adam's voice, Breaking Israel News supports Rabbi Weiss and the Sanhedrin in terms of renewing the covenant with Noah for the 70 nations. As Christians, you should have your ears perked up to this and really beware of consuming information from this site because it is deceiving to the Christian body because Christians are going here for prophetic information not really knowing that this is a deceit. They are trying to bring you into different covenants. The blood of bulls and goats and lambs is nothing for us. They try to pass it off as saying, well, it's, it's, it's just to renew a covenant of Abraham and it's a good thing for the world. It has pure intentions and therefore it's good. No. It is absolutely not good. It is going back to being a child of the flesh and relying on blood that cannot save you. For the covenant that we entered to is a new covenant. It's new wine. It's better wine. It's the blood of Jesus that has saved us and cleansed us from all sin and, right and unrighteousness. Even considering going back to sacrificial offerings is heresy. And as I did my rebuke of the Hebrew Roots movement, one of the things that was absolutely frightening about this movement, which is gaining steam all the time, which is prophetic as it fits into all of this. There are a lot of people in the Hebrew Roots movement that said, well, currently we don't offer sacrifices because there is no temple, which is an incredibly scary thing to say, because what if there is a temple? Does that mean that you are going to be like this Gentile man following the guidance of Jewish rabbis and going back to sacrificing animals, even though that is heretical because they're convincing you that it is something with pure intent and it's out of love and good for the world and that it's uniting humanity under a common fraternity, as Pope Francis would put it. 
Now, going to this video that uh, Adam Eliyahu Berkowitz put out, he knew that there was a lot of condemnation from Christians and a lot of people saying, beware that he's a deceiver and this is a deceiving thing. And he tries to rationalize why it was a good thing. And it is not a good thing. And he says that there's a lot of people lying about it. There's a lot of people spewing hate. I don't hate this man. But I will tell you, and I will tell Adam specifically, that this is not compatible with the Christian faith. And you should not try to convince Christians that this is a good thing because this is explicitly against biblical primary doctrine. You do not understand this at this point because there is a veil currently over your eyes. But the God that the Jews are currently serving is not the God of the Christian faith. I'm going to pull up some scripture for you. These are Jesus' own words in John chapter 8, starting in verse 42. Jesus said to them, this is, he's speaking to the Pharisees. He's speaking to the Jews who were not following him, but were rather wanting to, you know, condemn him. If God, and there's only one God, were your father, you would love me. For I came from God and I am here. I came not of my own accord, but he sent me. Why do you not understand what I say? It is because you cannot bear to hear my word. You are of your father the devil, and your will is to do your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in truth, because there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks out of his own character, for he is a liar and the father of lies. And so what this is categorically saying is not, and I'll repeat, it is not to say all Jews who do not currently believe in Christ are of the devil does not say that. It says that all those who forfeit Jesus unto their death but claim to know God do not know God and are not serving God no matter if you say as the Pharisees said Abraham is our father. Because Jesus said if you were Abraham's children you would be doing the works that Abraham did. I could go more and more into this in terms of the fact that there is a spiritual connotation here. When Abraham was given a promise by God, saying that even in your old age, you and Sarah would have a child of a promise given by God, which is Isaac. As long as you trust in me, you will have a child. Those who trust in faith in God are children of the promise just as Isaac was. However, if you do not trust in God and you would rather try to do your own good works, which Adam is saying over and over and over again, he talks about how as long as a person has light in their heart and they want to do good things, I support them. And he said, I do not want to go to a heaven that excludes a man who tries to serve God in his own way. You can see the incompatibility with Christ's commands. That there was a way that was right in Abraham and Sarah's eyes and that God is not going to fulfill his promise, go into Hagar and have a child for you have no offspring. That was man trying to do his own thing in a fleshly way. And that gave birth to Ishmael, which then gave birth to Islam. But if you rely on the promise and faith, then you are spiritual children, just as Isaac was a spiritual child of the promise. And so, if you read John 8 again, Jews who claim to be serving the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob are not serving currently the same God as the Christian faith. And so, do not be deceived. By videos like this. Even though I think there's a sincere intent, I think he is sincerely hurt by people that are spewing hate, and I'm sure he is getting hate mail over this. I'm sure he wants to reach out and love and explain himself. He's being very open and honest here. But he is deceived, and what he is telling you is deceitful. And so I am warning you to 
not go to Breaking Israel News for your prophetic insight, as it is from a website from people who do not currently know who God is, because they do not submit to Christ. And under Christ's own authority and the word that he has given us, they are not serving the same God. We pray for their salvation. We pray that they end up being a remnant of Israel that turns to him. But currently, no. And so I just find it amazing throughout all this. In this video, you can watch it yourself, pretty short, 15 minutes. He talks about how the Noahide laws should not be objectionable to any religion. Christians should not object to this. Sacrifices with pure intent are okay. That we did a good deed for the world. As long as a person has light in their heart, he doesn't want to go to a heaven that excludes someone for trying to do a good thing. He wants a Messiah that accepts men to serve or that serve God each in their own way and then tries to rationalize this event where they sacrificed a lamb and said that it wasn't a sin offering sacrifice. So Christians, we know that Jesus is your final sin offering. Don't think that it's a sin offering. It's just something different. It's just renewing a covenant with Abraham. Well, I'm not renewing or going into any other covenant than the one that was offered to me by the shedding of Christ's blood. So, lots of stuff going on in the news prophetically. I think we need to watch the Pope, as always. I think the intertwining between him and high rabbis in Judaism and grand imams in Islam will become more and more pronounced. I believe that we will see more of these tri-faith initiative Abrahamic family houses come up. And ultimately, I think the Antichrist will pander to this unification of the three religions. Because they are known worldwide, and they do have such roots that I think many other religions would go along with it if there was some type of Messiah figure that did signs and works and wonders. Absolutely incredible to think about what time we are living in. Because even though there's been many vloggers and bloggers that have been talking about the end times, most notably since September 23rd, 2015, when there was a lot of papal activity um, that was highly prophetic, a lot of people fell along the wayside saying, oh, hey, the end times didn't happen. That's long gone and passed. But I'll tell you what, four years is a drop in the bucket in terms of prophetic timelines. Four years and we saw the Pope align with the United Nations and do speeches before the United Nations and do speeches before both houses of Congress, that he's aligning with all the CEOs of the world, that he's having these global educational packs that he's having global religious packs with major religions and that now we're actually seeing uh, the Jewish people return to sacrifices and this flurry of activity in Israel between them and Palestine and everything that's on the geopolitical sphere in terms of war in that area oh my you better get ready and I don't mean ready in terms of understanding prophecy better. I mean, getting ready in terms of entering into a deeper relationship with Christ and knowing him and loving him and understanding good sound doctrine because the days are evil and deceitful. And hopefully through my channel, I've been leading people in truth to help prevent some of these deceptions like this one trying to lead people into a different type of covenant than the one that they are already in. There will be a great falling away, if possible, that it could deceive even the elect. And so, although prophecy is in, incredibly important, it shouldn't necessarily be your primary focus. You should have your eyes set on Christ, lean into the Spirit and have Him teach you and always ask for his protection. And rely on brothers and sisters to help you walk the straight and narrow path. Because it is getting pretty treacherous. Fast. Really fast. 
Anywho, I am glad to be back, and I've got some more teaching videos to help edify you and uh, you know, teach you some sound doctrine. So this is Mike with On Point Preparedness. God bless everyone, and keep the faith.